When last we left our adventurers, it's it's been a while. So, pardon me if I don't quite remember everything, but fairly certain that they had spent the day collecting information about Eve's heritage and oh what else I might need help on this one I can't quite remember well it was in the aftermath of the Cass and Nix encounter right that's right they had been fleeing from the their encounter with Cass and Nix and decided to lay low that's right. Spending an evening inside of an inn, inside of... No, inside of Eve's inn, inside of an actual inn. <laughs> That's it. I'm pretty Inception. jumbled. Inception. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh god, that's gonna... Well, I picked that. <laughs> Off to a swimming start, this intro. But... In the morning after, they decided to split their way, split ways. One party to investigate the invitation from a mysterious third party, offering information on uh, the Zentarum, and particularly Manshun, information that piques Gazrakul's interest. And Bosch and Tia went to the nearby temple to get into contact with Bahamut. Only to be approached by a dwarf calling themselves Aranax, informing them that a dragon in the bay has been apparently slain with no body left behind. But, before we get back to that, Eve, Veritas, and Gazra Kool, you are all wandering through the streets, and they are a-bustling, because today is Bright Swords, a show of force and competence by the local guard and military uh, to show off either parading about or anywhere between parading uh, some faux matches in, in the uh, in the arena or even some simple juggling. You can see all sorts of various uh, expressions of this throughout the streets as you wander. But to where do you go? Eve is just kind of tailing Gazra Cool after their comment last time about needing more blood. Just keeping a constant wary eye on them while simultaneously playing tour guide and talking about bright swords. Gods, I forgot this was today. Oh, so much has been going on. Guess we got in at a good time. You'll have to explain this particular holiday. Well, I mean, it's basically just a show of force for the city guard and their might and their being a force to contend with and basically discouraging criminals from trying to kind of gives them a look. Like, you know, I'm sure that this is the day when people would be least likely to murder someone. <laughs> of course, I'm sure crowds of people crushing each other against the walls in celebration 
doesn't end up in a single accidental homicide. That's an oxymoron. An accidental homicide is classified as manslaughter in the law courts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now that's very Water Davian of It's so cheerful. Looking at the fest the festivities. Yeah. Yeah it is. Looks a little wistful. Uh, worlds away from the other water deep we saw. It's good to be back. I'm glad to hear that. Kind of a... Kind of keeping a little bit of a solemn face. Seeing all these festives around, Gazrakul, do you still plan on seeking this very particular spell component? Uh, gosh, definitely in the back of their mind. I think Eve also pointed out last time uh, about there being underground fighting pits as well that she suggested <laughs> so that... We don't have to murder anyone. That is true. However, you do not and, know where these are. Right. I think she may have implied that we should go looking, and Gaz was like, this is your place. You you know where the things are. So <laughs> this very well could be Eve taking, just keeping them busy so they don't gank a beggar. Did God's Rock Cool make it known that that was what they wanted to do, not the beggar? I mean, <laughs> the underground fighting bits. Uh. I think so. I think they did make it clear that Mer that was actually killed as part of the thing. You guys still intent on the whole fighting thing? If you would prefer that innocent blood is not shed, then yes, because we will need that blood. Because if we're going to the Bregandier, if we're going to a pirate ship with unknowns, it may prove useful at least to escape again, to have our friend from the abyss alongside us. I understand your point, but yeah, no, obviously I'm not going to be okay with you just taking some random person off the street. That's horrible. If you need that then I guess it would make more sense for it to be someone who's already... Gods, this sounds horrible. Committed themselves to potentially a, a deadly encounter? Someone you marked see, for death. This is why we do not concern ourselves with such moral quandaries. You twist yourself in circles looking for justifications when the world around you cares not. Yeah, well, I care. Alright? 
Anyway, underground fighting wasn't really a thing that I knew much about or, or looked into at all. But, I mean, some of the people I hung out with would probably be more likely to know about it than me. Maybe... Bill, we've got all day. Hmm. Maybe some of my old sailor buddies, if they're in. They like to frequent taverns and inns in the sea ward and the dock ward. So maybe let's try the dock ward first. Lead the way. Alright. Alright. If memory serves, you were staying in the sea ward. I believe that is where your inn was. Right. In hindsight, though, the sea ward is kind of fancier than the dock ward, right? It makes more sense that the sailors would be hanging out in the dock ward, right? Oh, absolutely. Just letting you know that you are traveling across the entire city. <sighs> traveling past the market, the castle ward, a uh, large portion of the dock ward before you actually get to the docks. Um, but I would like Gazrak Cool to roll a perception check. Can do. Seven. A seven. All right, then. Starting off good. Starting strong. The sight and spectacle of the of the festivities continue around you. And as you start to get into the cast ward and start to go a little bit farther and farther, you do notice that the festivities do seem to be less and less. They seem to be focused around the Field of Triumph, which is in the sea ward. But eventually you do make it to the dock ward, and you are asking around for what? Oh, well, back when Eve was uh, living in Waterdeep, she kind of talked to loads of different types of people, including some figures that probably a little kid shouldn't be hanging around with. Like sailors who were in from trips, who would just kind of tell her stories about their their trips and things while hanging around in bars. <laughs> So she's just going to kind of poke her head into a bunch of taverns in the dock ward to see if she recognizes any faces. All right. Hmm. How about a survival check? Okay. It's doing the thing again where it's not sending my rolls through. Hang on. It has been very strange lately. It's It shows up in the chat log. Now it worked. Alright. With a 16, after a little bit you're able to find someone that you do recognize. Okay, okay. Guys, come on in. I found someone. She'll cross the tavern over to this figure. Hey, Kaibo! Hi, hello! Oh, been some time. How have you been doing? Did you just get back in from somewhere? I getting back in before before the freeze happens. Oh, it is getting toward that time, isn't it? Mm hmm Hey, I wanted to introduce you to a couple of my friends. Uh, this here is Veritas. 
hello. Well, hello gives you a, a very uh, hearty handshake. Uh, you almost kind of bounce um, up and down from it. Actually bounce up and down, or just like the <laughs> arm... Um, Wiggles like Jello when he when he moves when he handshakes. Gotta put some more strength into your handshakes, boy. <laughs> ah, and, and here's so. And here's Cosmo. Cool. Greetings. Yeah. Bit of a dark hood you're wearing, but. Pleasure to meet you, if I can't really see you. No. <laughs> is Chelaby out walking around, or is she in rapier form? She's on your hip. Okay. Uh, so listen, Kaibo. Uh, I was wondering, because I just got back in with my friends, and they're kind of seeing the sights of the city and all that. I'm sure that you guys, whenever you come in from trip, you like to do some of the, the enjoying the local events and things, right? Yeah, on occasion. Once you see it a couple of times, it's about the same all the time. Hmm? But you did pick a good day to come by. Well, with it being the you know, bright swords and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. Definitely a day for tourism. But but we were thinking more like these two and a couple of my other companions are very skilled warriors. Well, in different ways. <laughs> so they were thinking about the whole arena thing. But it looks like that's kind of a center of a big hullabaloo today because of bright swords. Do you know if there are any other places we might see a good fight anywhere? It's not a D20. Well, I mean, it's not all happening down the field of triumph. I'm pretty sure they, the gods have set up wrestling and boxing matches around town. Mm, wrestling and boxing. Oh my goodness, after the things we've been through, that just feels really mundane, doesn't it, guys? Yeah, mundane. Anything a little bit grittier that you know about? I won't tell anybody, I promise. Grittier, huh? Well, I mean... Some late nights down in some of the taverns here in the Dark Ward do get a bit, uh... Bloody. If that's your fancy, then figure a for it, leave. I mean, I'm more trying to look out for my friends, but you know. Right, right. Hmm, some tavern brawls. Okay. Alright, well, if that's your recommendation. We'll definitely take that in mind. Late night, he said. Oh, aye, yeah. As the night goes on, people keep drinking a bit more than they probably should. Hmm. Fair enough. Okay, well, I don't want to take up too much of your relaxing time, so I'll let you get back to doing your thing. Aye. You have a nice day, lassie. You too. Say hi to the others for me. Of course, of course. Eve will head back towards the entrance, muttering under her breath to the others. Oh, well, that was a bust. Also, just as a general side note, I always forget to re-up it, but basically guys are cool while we're in Waterdeep. Anytime we're not in combat, he takes on the appearance of the very nondescript human. Right, I was aware. But you also keep a hood up during that as well, don't yep. you? Yep, mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. That's, that's what I thought. Yeah, just re-upping that in, in the consciousness.
Any other suggestion? Hmm. Well, if it's not something that the sailors pay much mind to... Hmm. You know, I bet some of the merchants in the marketplace might have a couple of connections, especially maybe the ones that deal in weapons and things. Perhaps you know a couple should, of them. Perhaps hmm? we should see if we can finish other business and hope we find something opportune along the way. Squints at them. Thing is, I don't know if I want to trust you with what you think is opportune, you know. Well, we can say a prayer at the Library of Ogma that somebody will attempt to mug us, and then it will make it somehow justifiable in your mind that their lives are worth taking. Ugh. All right, all right, shut up about that, will ya? That's right. Veritas, you did want to do some research, didn't you? If possible, it's... Other business could come first, though. Well, the Library of Ogma would be a good place to do that. So, in the meantime, since my contact wound up being a dud, we could head there while I brainstorm other potential places we could go. We do quite like Ogma as a deity. They always do their best to answer questions. And knowledge is power, after all. It certainly is. Yeah, Ogma's pretty alright. Nice guy. As you head out of this tavern and start heading back north, uh, you actually all notice, kind of down the docks from where you are, you do notice that there is kind of a... There are two ships that seem to have an almost pop-up carnival around it various tents and uh, you can see other kind of performers there more more classical carnival kind of deal you know people you know people juggling tightrope clowns that sort of thing hmm. is this something that usually happened during uh Bright swords? No. Oh. Reminds oh, it's like they're... Of... Mm -hmm. Oh. Reminds me of the witch-like carnival. Yeah, we were going to ask, Eve, do these things pop up in every city on the Sword Coast? What? The, the tents on boats? I've actually never seen those before. It's not just on just the boats, the... it's also on the docks. Surrounding and the docks. on the docks. Mm -hmm. Carnivals in general. This is a thing that humans enjoy. Oh, and... yeah. People will take any opportunity to get some good festivities in. Interesting. Hmm. Kind of curious, honestly. Maybe it's worth checking out. Yeah, we can at least swing by on our way. Don't have to necessarily stop and do anything, but just a little look see from her. Perhaps Veritas will find a reason to turn another carnival goer into a crab. I'm keeping an eye on Yagazi. I remember what happened the last carnival. What happened the last carnival. You may want to keep two eyes on us, Veritas. And all three heads smile. 
I mean, the person smiles. I'm so smart. He, Vertas <laughs> imagines the three heads smiling. They smile with the human face and it looks off because they don't smile like a normal human smiles. It's crooked and weird. <sighs> I'll be keeping an eye on you. And presents the way for them to go forward. And as you approach this pop-up carnival, you immediately notice that the two ships uh, do have names uh, printed on them. Uh, one being called the Heartbreaker and the other one being called the Hellraiser. But the thing that probably catches your attention the most is the banner that is being hung across the dock as you approach the Sea Maiden's Fair. Wait. Uh, stops. <laughs> That's not the ship, but that is the name we were given. Wait, what? The Sea Maiden's Fair. The vessel of Captain Zord. He squints over. That's not one of the carnival ships, is it? No, the ships, the two ships that are docked, you see, are the Heartbreaker and the Hellraiser. So wait, where's this banner? You see, just kind of strung from one end of the dock to the other. Um, just in the general area where this whole carnival has popped up. Oh. We thought they were referring to a vessel, not an actual fair. That's a bizarre choice for glances around and lowers her voice. I suppose it pirate lowered? Yes? We don't know. You're the pirate here. Is this something they do often? Oh my god. Carnival pirates? I'm not gonna deign to answer that. Well, then I guess it might be good to scope out the area for later? Indeed. The meeting is supposed to take place at night, but some daylight recon couldn't hurt. Yeah. Veritas will scope it out. All right. You begin to scope it out. But... That got real loud a second. Uh, I'd like to go back to Bosch and Tia. Bosch, you are have just receiving this mission from this person of investigating the death of a dragon in the bay. Okay, that's um it's pretty heavy um and I'm sure we're gonna want to help what what's the first step well given what we already know from your previous encounters. We're almost certain that still Stilhavity is behind it, but we're more curious on how he did it, being locked away and all. 
it's clear that he has allies in the city, but we don't know who. Okay, um... Well, there's a couple that we know about, um... I know for sure they were gonna come here to try to talk to him, so it's a good bet that they're working with him by now. Um... A couple red lords. Really, uh, from around here. Red Lords. Yeah. That uh, does not bode well. No. Uh, I guess they, um, they were able to come here because of uh, some other stuff that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> yeah. A uh, bull named uh, Ass and, uh, was, was she Nyx? Is that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like and, and Nyx. Um, mm. Scary. Um, yeah, we we saw Nyx and um, and uh, Eve was even able to see both of them together. Uh, but that was real bad because she was using a spell to see them, and they saw her right back. Hmm. And you think that they would be the ones that did this? I mean, it fits. Um, doesn't mean that you're definitely the ones. They're certainly scary and shy back from murder. And um, said they were going to be seeking out still have any. I don't know, did, did, did you have any um, thoughts? Hmm. Well, I'm pretty new in town. Well was thinking that perhaps you and your companions could investigate the scene. But if you're certain that it was these dreadlords... Um, well... You could look, for sure. Um... So what, what's the deal? Like, uh, you said there wasn't a body found. How do, uh, how do we even know this person's just missing? I know because of my staff. And he holds up his staff. Uh, which just looks like a normal wooden staff. Okay, um, you're gonna have to take it to basics. Sorry, uh, what, how does the staff tell you that? Oh, right, right, right. Kind of looks around. This is no ordinary staff. This is the dragon staff. And I got harm. This is what allows dragons to be permitted inside of Waterdeep. As such, it is connected to every dragon in Waterdeep. And so when one dies, its wielder knows, and I am its wielder. That it was, um, means that if a dragon wants to come in the city, they would have to talk to you? Sometimes. Other times I know ahead of time. And can give permission before. As was your case.
looking to Tia. Right. Your father alerted me of your arrival uh, just the other day, I believe. That you would be on your way eventually. Granted, a bit sooner than I thought, but... But nevertheless, good timing. The, the timing's a little complicated. Um, so we had questions about that too, because um, technically, Ass and Nix got here less than a day from when we saw them in uh, Neverwinter. Less than a day? From which day? She goes cross-eyed for a second. Um, okay, so we were in Neverwinter at the Witchlight Carnival. Um, a real square on the calendar. Uh, I think it was two days ago. Okay. Oh, pretty fast. They mm. didn't walk, and they probably didn't fly. Hmm. Saw them there two days ago. Yeah. That might poke a hole. In your Dreadlord theory. Again, back to basics. Uh, why would it do that? Because he died three days ago. Oh, yeah, I guess that would do that. For sure, need to go look at the crime scene, um, which I'm guessing is in Bay. Yes, it would be in his cave underwater. Okay. Well, um, how how deep? deep enough. It's not crushingly deep, it is just a harbor, but it's, you know, deep enough for a dragon to be about and not be noticed. So, mm, at most 50 feet, maybe? I don't really okay, know. Yeah. I, don't, I don't really swim in the bay. I think 50 feet's doable. Um, is, there, is there one of those things where it's like a secret layer that has an air pocket, uh, so we just swim down there and then we're good, or it's like holding breath or hold... I guess you haven't been there, so yeah. I don't even know. I do not know. Cool. Uh, I guess we'll, uh, we'll find out and do we try to come prepared if we can? Okay. Um, but the bay is not that big, so we're going to pretty much just kind of go out there and swim down until we find it? Well, it, it is actually quite big. The bay itself, in terms of, like, width... And such. Oh, it's just not very deep. Right. Because it's just a little inlet. Okay. Uh, any tips on finding the deer then? Hmm. kind of thinks for a moment. 
TLS. The last time that we went down to the docks and asked people for directions, it didn't go very well. Roll a history check, Bosch. Okay. Uh, I... Are you reloading my character sheet? Discovered. That I must reload the character sheet every time before rolling checks. For some reason, D and D Beyond doesn't work. Yeah, it's been a bit weird lately. I've noticed. Ah, a fifteen is much yeah. better than what they both rolled. You recall reading through your book, specifically when you were trying to research hordes and stuff for dragons. That, you know, every dragon kind of has their own horde. But all dragons can sense hordes. Not necessarily the horde that they're going for, but they are aware of it. There's a weird sixth sense. Uh, a sixth uh, sense to that kind of thing. So you actually kind of have a radar already as to where it might be. Presuming the horde hasn't been taken. Right. Okay. Uh, so, had an idea that uh, maybe I read this in a book. That dragons have kind of a sense for hordes. Yeah, do you want to give it a try? See if we can just go out on the um, a. If you get kind of a hordy feeling, that could work. After all, what would still have any need with a horde if the dragon was his goal? That could work. That's an excellent idea, Bosch. Should have thought of it. I and mean, we're all doing a bunch of new stuff. We're not exactly detectives. I think we could be, you know, put in a little effort. Okay, so, um, so we can find a boat and cruise through the harbor will give us some idea all right didn't the rest of them say they were going to investigate something at the harbor uh i mean they were doing a couple things right they also uh. said something about researching but i thought that one of the bigger things was meeting with some zord fellow Uh, yeah, I think that was. Um, and to be honest, we weren't that clear on uh, when we were all going to meet up or where after this, so uh, maybe we can catch them there. Right. I think they oh. said the ship was the Sea Mains Fair, right? So maybe we look around wherever that ship is, find them, oh. and tell them about this. I mean, and sailors at least know each other's ships, so probably at least ask for directions for that. Right. Someone should know. Hmm? Okay. Um, uh, and, uh... It's a bad feeling about there not being a body around um seem to know a little bit about uh, what we've been doing the um just yeah. some basic things that I've heard just some basic things that I've heard okay um oh well, one of the things we, we've learned about Mox is they can eat things that are magic which uh, includes dragon bodies, and uh, it makes them grow and maybe even hide. 
Hmm. So that might be what happened to the body. If this would still have any. I don't know, would your staff tell you that? No. No, it wouldn't. Okay, well, um, we can try and find out some stuff. Uh, we should probably get going. Uh, how when we we want to find you again should we meet with you here mm, no I have I do have my own responsibilities that I do need to get back to mm. it may be difficult to get in contact with me again Okay. Um, well, one of my friends can send you a message from wherever, so hmm. try that out. Can that should work? There. We'll, we'll try to make sure that it's not in the middle of the night or something. Right. Well, some of my responsibilities might take me into some magically dead zones. Do not be alarmed if. Any sendings come back with no response. Okay. Um, is that something we need to worry about here? No, no. The areas that... Uh, no? Okay. okay. Very, very specifically, part of my responsibilities. Well, uh, one less thing to worry about. Okay, um, well, yeah, let's, let's get going. Make sure we can catch our friends. Um, yeah. I didn't say it already, but, um, sorry, presumably your friends, um, victim, sorry about your friend. It is unfortunate, but I didn't really know him that well. Still sad. Oh. But with your help, we can make sure that this doesn't happen again. But, uh, are you all ready to go? <sighs> yes. Yes, we head off. I suppose you do. Heading off down south. Towards the dock ward. Could I have you make a perception check? Perception. Okay. Twelve. Twelve. Mm. All right. You head on through the town beholding the festivities on your way as you make your way to the dock ward where the rest of the party is currently already at this is quite loud why is it so loud it's loud the rest of you have arrived at the sea mains fair not a ship but a fair <laughs> So I'll ask you, how do you plan to begin your investigation? That's a good question. Uh, where does it seem like there's a lot of, like, the most amount of people, like, going in and out? Like, what's the popular attraction? 
So as you approach the Sea Mains Fair, right off the bat, you can see that the fair isn't really open. Like, there are a few performers that are just kind of going and entertaining some people that are passing by. But for the most part, you actually look and see that that this fair is actually still getting ready. And it's actually quite busy of people going back and forth from the ships, carrying boxes and, and goods. Um, seems like they're still getting set up for their thing. But there are a few people here and there, mostly just street performers at this point. But it is the... very busy uh -huh. on the dock. It looks like this place is will open later. They're still setting up. Is this perhaps a night carnival? That would make our plans later especially interesting. Indeed. How private this meeting is going to be seems somewhat up in the air. Uh, he's going to glance around for any hint of, like, lanterns that might be lit later, or, like, any, I don't know, fireworks or a thing. Any sign that nighttime activities are going to be a focus in this carnival? Um, looking around you, you do see that there are, are some lanterns and, and whatnot, um, but you don't see a whole lot. So, maybe? Hmm. Like, there's definitely not as many as you think they would need, but there is some. Okay. Uh, let's maybe look around and see if there are any areas that would be a little more private, so to speak, in this place. Because those would probably be the areas that we'd be meeting in. So any, like, tents that seem really unmarked and unremarkable? Or any areas that are not probably going to be very well lit? Like the bowels of the ship, perhaps. Perhaps. Eighty. Let's just wander around for now. I guess, and see if we spot anything. Alrighty, wandering. I think I missed your declarative statement, but what did you say you were doing? We're just wandering around to see if there are any areas that look like they might be a little more private later on, maybe. Looking like unmarked, areas, unmarked tents maybe. or... Yeah, yeah. Okay. The, mm, a group investigation check. Yep, and D and D Beyond is not working. What is up with it lately? I think it's actually the Beyond Twenty extension. I think it might need an update. Right. But you can tell me what you rolled. Um. The the roll that I got 
was the first one was a 17. Okay. Very good rolls from all of you. Looking around on the dock and uh, occasionally peeking your head into the occasional setup tent, you actually do not find any uh, private areas, at least on the docks. Also, with that very high investigation check, with the hustle and bustle, you might be able to get on the ships actually pretty easily. Looking, looking around. In Eve's, in your mind, you hear Veritas's voice. We possibly could just get in the ship through all the hustle and bustle. Uh, I mean, I guess we could try, but that's potentially going to wind up with us getting in a good deal of trouble, although he glances around. Is there any guard presence or are they all busy with the uh, Bright Swords parade? With that investigation, you do notice that on the ships, like on the decks of the ships, you do see some people that are patrolling like guard-like, but none of them are, are off the ships. Like, everyone that's on the dock is either a common worker or one of the carnies, the carnival performers. People glance at Veritas and kind of, like, gesture with her head toward the, the deck of one of the ships. Look up there, you see those people walking around? Those look like patrolling guards, although... Maybe not in the traditional guard sense in Waterdeep. I think that might be potentially quite risky. But it also means that those ships are really important, maybe, to have so much security. If we would have a talk or meeting, I bet you anything that it would be there. Do you think maybe the purpose of this carnival is just to mask the presence of those ships and distract from anything that might be going on in there? It's a like a big setting. loud diversion? It's a perfect setup. Shaking, shaking loud. Distractions up at front. No one sees the quiet stuff in the back. Interesting. That's the case. We're going to have to be pretty careful when we're actually coming here to visit who we're visiting. Maybe let Gosra cool know what we've figured. I will. Gaz, in your head. You hear those two ships, Gaz Ra Kul. There's yes, patrol well, on them. Oh, there is. Me and Eve suspect that that's where we'll be held having this meeting with this. Pirate Lord. That would make sense. Somewhere they feel comfortable and in control of the situation. Perfect distraction, too, with the fair going on right out front. Well, that might be all the information we can glean from here until we return tonight. 
pressing any further would be disadvantageous. It would arouse suspicion earlier than we are ready. Let's gather up all the information we can from the temple and maybe find you some fresh blood. Indeed, in the tight confines of a ship, a Tanaruk would be greatly useful in robbing this captain of his ideations of control of the situation, if it is required. I do understand how useful the demon was. I'm pretty sure you saved Eve's life. We all do our part. So I give my thanks this once. Ah, and and uh, out loud for both of you to hear. All right. Looks like the carnival is going to open later. Shall we go to the temple? Find some research on the Astral Sea? Sounds good in the meantime. Indeed. I would like Eve and Bosch to roll me d20s. Oh no, they're cool. gonna miss this. <laughs> Bosch coming into the docks as we're walking out. <laughs> that is what I was looking for. Numbers that were close. As the as Eve, Gazra, Cool, and Veritas begin to leave the Sea Mains Fair, you actually notice Bosch and Tia walking down the docks. Oh, oh. Hey, hey, guys, look, look, do you see the big green head poking up above the rest of the crowd? There's only one green head that, that pokes out of the crowds like that. <laughs> I'd wave, but he'd never see me from down here. Veritas will wave. Well, hey. Bosh, Tia. So, um, I guess the Sea Maiden's pair isn't a boat, huh? Bosh? Um, Quite. So, um, got some, um, bad news. I guess no other way to say it. Um, we kind of met up with, um, a messenger from Bahamut, and, um, a dragon has been murdered in the bay. Uh, and he kind of asked us to figure it out. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? A dragon was murdered in, in the bay? Uh, so, um, this guy, um, or, let's see here, Oranax, um, he is in charge of wh whether or not dragons can come in the city. Uh, he's got a staff that doesn't look that fancy, but apparently does all kinds of cool dragon stuff. Including, uh, you give advance permission for Tia to come. That was pretty cool. Um, this dragon, uh, Zelfarn, who lives there in the bay, and he was killed, and his body was never found. And this is probably very bad. So, uh, we're gonna need to take a swim. 
find out what's going on. Would Water Davians be aware of the existence of Celathorn at all, or not? Nah? No. <laughs> You're telling me that there's a dragon that's just been hanging out in our bay? There was a dragon, apparently. Uh, oh, dear. What the hell happened? Uh, it's got to be him, right? Kind of figure. There was uh, something real important, because this came up, and my first thought was ass and nicks, but uh, it happened three days ago. Three days? So they wouldn't have been here yet. No. Still have any? Could he have been there? I mean... Like, I guess he's not really... As far as we know, he's not really here. Here. Yeah, I get the feeling that he can be pretty much anywhere he wants. To some extent. But... At the very least, when he left Fandolin, he mentioned that he was coming here. So he's probably been here for a while. Either way. Yeah. Who knows what sorts of things he's been working on setting up all this time. We know his propension to dragons. Yes. Oh dear, this is grave news. I am afraid study session will have to be postponed. This is more important. Yeah. Sorry, buddy. I'm uh, so excited about that, too. Well, there will always be time for research later. In the meantime, I guess we've got investigation to do? In the bay, huh? Wow. Uh, uh, Aura next told me, uh, the bay is not deep, but, uh... Oh, uh, I feel out. like that's very relative. I mean, they call it water deep for a reason. I can hold my breath for a while. Hmm. If we're going to be investigating down there, I don't know if we want to rely on that necessarily. Especially at depth. I think maybe some preparation might be in order. Okay. Uh, I mean, is there any kind of magic stuff that helps with that? Looking between 50 Wizard and Eve and... Yeah, I guess Veritas does magic stuff. Uh, yeah, this sorcerer mm -hmm. does magic you stuff. You know. <laughs> he, a bit of, he's a magic boy. <laughs> I mean, I don't have any magic on me, per se, that could help us with that, unless either of you guys might. Glances at them as well. Could turn you into something that could breathe. Okay, that's a start. Could you do it for all of us? Mm. I can do that to one person. Hmm. What about you guys? Most of our spells are meant for dispatching foes. We could perhaps, so they flex the museum apparatus, try something interesting. Guys, don't burn down the docks. <laughs> Wait. Not even a little. <laughs> Good news is, if uh, we get out on the bay, then all we could burn down is 
every boat we're on. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> uh, you guys can swim, right? Of course. What self-respecting water Davian doesn't know how to swim? Let us swim. Oh no. <laughs> we must admit there was not, um... much water to practice swimming in the desert. Oh dear. Is is it like floating? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's you, like floating, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean you you've kind of been swimming in uh in the weasel. It was just right. in, you know, bays instead of water. I could do that. Are cool. Don't worry about it. It's not that difficult once you get the hang of it. We can help show you the ropes once we're in the water. Okay? We must ask what ropes have to do with the art of swimming. Oh dear. I mean, if you start drowning, then we can haul you up by a rope, so there's that. <laughs> yes, that does make sense. That's exactly what I meant. But anyway, yeah, we shouldn't probably just rely on swimming and holding our breaths then. Um, if we don't have anything that can help us magically, I'm sure there's got to be someone in the city who does. Quick stop by the marketplace to see if there's anything that can help us on this task. Sure. Why not? We're also going to have to find somebody who has a boat. Unless you do want to just swim all the way out there, but it's like we'd probably get tired. It's a big bay. Uh. I'm sure that there must be ferries of some kind to charter, perhaps. Are there? Yeah, you could probably find it. Find some uh, some sort of charter that take you out into the bay. Yeah, sure. But first, supplies. R roll an intelligence check, Eve. Could also just ask your sailor friend. Oh, shite. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I forgot all about Kaibal, even though I just talked to him not too long ago. Poor guy. But... <laughs> <laughs> the ship thing shouldn't be a problem then. I think we can catch a ride with him and that should be alright. Supplies? Probably still important. Not too crazy Sailors about the idea carry. of free diving. Yes? Mm. Sailors don't just carry cushions to breathe underwater. It's not a thing. I mean, they're kind of expensive. Uh, from what I understand. They so just like, have really good lungs? <laughs> I mean, ideally, the sailors don't want to necessarily be in the water. Unless there's an emergency. I mean, could certainly uh, save a lot of overhead and just not have a ship, but <laughs> wouldn't work out well. Wouldn't you want to be prepared for emergency? Well, yes. 
but you'd be surprised the lengths people would go to to avoid having to spend more coin than absolutely necessary. People will cut corners in the most dangerous of places sometimes. I'll bet something of like, uh, you know, something that floats that you can just grab on a lot cheaper than a potion that lets you breathe in the water. Oh, yeah. By leaps and bounds. Huh. Oh. Money is more important. I knew I could buy stuff, but didn't know that I valued it more than more than others' safety or lives. Yeah, just because people do it doesn't mean it's a wise or a smart thing to do. But some people do it. To be fair, it is all that's keeping people alive themselves a lot of the time. Speaking of spending money, shopping trip! Would we be able to find anything to help in the marketplace? Probably. Probably. Let's go! You might even be able to find something, you know, before that, even. Oh? Uh -huh. Well, there is, of course, the trade ward. That's true. And there's Let's plenty. browse through there. And honestly, there's plenty of businesses throughout the city. I would say, give me a survival check, really, to just see how long it takes you to find something. Because you will find one, eventually. Just a matter of if you manage to completely miss it or not. And with that check, I'd say in within an hour, you find a, a, uh, a magic shop. All right. Let's browse. Yes, you find Ethereus Goods and Wares. Neat. Oh, the whole shop just for magic stuff. I mean, we do have a school of mages here, so... It pays for Waterdeep to be well supplied. I'm sure they get good business. Uh. Walking into the store, you immediately get the sense that the that this person takes great pride in uh making sure that their store is nice and tidy, despite the chaotic nature of their wares. Um, you know, it's a little bit hard to properly organize magic items, given that they're so wild and varied. But going in, you... don't actually see anyone behind the counter. Place is kind of empty, actually. Hello? As you say hello into this empty room, a chill kind of runs up each of your spines and apparating behind the counter, you see a ghostly image. 
of a ghost. Hello and welcome to my shop. <coughs> Sorry. Welcome to my shop. Ethereus' oh. goods and wares. Oh. Uh, he- hello there. Didn't see you there. Huh. Lovely establishment you've got here. Very organized. Oh, I thank you, good lady. Eve. Hi. Eve. I am Ethereus. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Pleased to make Pleased yours as well. Me too. And thank you for not immediately running away. <laughs> You'd be surprised how hard it is to keep people inside the store. Like they haven't seen, seen someone dead. Stuff, so, like, uh... It's almost like they've never seen someone dead before. Mm-hmm. People die all the time. Anyway, I digress. What can I get you? Yes. We're looking to breathe underwater. Underwater? Well, there are many different ways to do that magically. Kind of drifts over to one section where you can see that there is a bookshelf just full of scrolls. You could take a scroll of water breathing... Of course, there are potions of water breathing, kind of drifts over to where there's bunches of glass tinctures and stuff. Or, if you're more of a naturalist, uh, and you can see there are various components in another area, you could uh, eat some of this uh, silly weed or something like that. How silly is it? Uh, So much so you grow gills. Oh. Permanently? No, no, temporarily. About an hour. Oh. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Hmm. What would you recommend for a slightly larger number of people? Hmm. In terms of cost effectiveness, probably the scroll. But it is slightly more expensive, of course. Mm. But we'd have to buy bulk of anything else. For everything else, it would be one per person. Mm. Cost effective if there is only one or maybe two people. But obviously with a group of your size, one, two, yes, quite a few, Probably the scroll would be my recommendation. And how much is the scroll? Ah, yes. The scroll? Scroll of that magnitude? I would say about 150 gold. Sure, I'll grab that. Oh, most excellent. Seems well worth it to me. Guys, you want to browse around and see if there's anything else you want while we're here? Just maybe not take too long. This, this seems pretty urgent. We may as well. Mm-hmm. Uh... Um, Veritas looks around Ethereus. Yes? What kind of, what kind of magical sticks do you have? Magical sticks? Hmm. I, I like collecting them. Let me check. Sticks, sticks. 
Well, I have this rather long one, and pulls out a quarterstaff. It does not wear or tear with age. Let's see. Sticks, sticks, sticks. I have this other staff that probably a bit out of your price range, but is an interesting one. Uh, pulls out a staff that has a that is long and has this sort of ice icicle pattern up at the top. I also have a couple of wands, wand of one that can find secret items or things, or ones that make sticky substance, like a web of some kind. The secret wand sounds very interesting. How much is that one? That one... That one would also be a hundred and fifty gold. Looking over to Eve. Did I get the stick? Eve glances back. Not having really noticed what you were doing with the sticks. Uh, do you see that there's been, like, sticks that have been pulled out? Like, being shown off? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. There's a secret stick. Find secret things. Ooh. You know, that sounds kind of relevant to the task at hand, doesn't it? Potentially. It's 150 gold pieces. Could you get it for me? Please? <laughs> kind of yeah, gives sure. like the puppy dog look. Ah, uh, why not? Let me get that stick, sir. All right. Another 150 gold. You got it. Excellent. It's fine. We're loaded. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't spent our money in a long time. So you say. Anything else? Says you're Cassandra, looking? not Eve. <laughs> Any other items of interest? I'm assuming that is a wand of secrets? Yes, it is a wand of secrets. Glorious. As your wand collection grows. <laughs> my, my stick of secrets. Just out of curiosity, uh, uh, another option that we didn't do, the uh, early weed. Does that need to like stay fresh, uh, or is it going to stay good for a while? Well, probably don't want to dry it out, but it should keep, especially in the humidity of Waterdeep. Honestly, I'm just curious to try it out, but uh, we don't need to do the same thing, so I think I'm good. That's oh, right, cool. Yeah. If you used that scroll, do you think you could get all of us with it? Or would that not cover everyone? Let us take a closer look. And is it, uh... What is the spell attached to the scroll specifically? It is water breathing. 
which I believe is a ritual spell, and I think it's on the wizard list. Let me see, because that sounds like one of those things that the level of the spell is what will determine the targets. I think it is. I know that it's, I know that it's a decent amount. I feel like it's six people. <clears throat> oh, what? third level up to ten willing creatures, yeah. Yep. Third level Ooh. ten willing creatures, yep. For 24 hours. And is a ritual. If we wanted a return trip, we'd need like two. Is a ritual and is on the wizard spell list. So you could copy oh, this yeah. into your spell book. Of course, you, you know? would need to buy materials for that. True. Getting that oh. real wizard. Getting the real wizard experience. Buying things. That is the whole thing. Oh. It's a rabbit hole that ends with you being broke. <laughs> Every time. They're going to... Let me see. They're going to read the scroll and then they're going to kind of commit it to heart and be like, that's alright. We don't need to buy it. I think with what I what we've seen, the machine should be able to replicate it. Wait. I already bought it. Oh, well. <laughs> then we can cast it, of course. We would simply require the materials. Okay. Um, while we're here, maybe a couple of healing potions might be a good idea? I have plenty oh, of those. You should need those. I have about a half dozen, each going for about 50 gold a pop. Let's see. He starts like pointing at everyone doing head count. <laughs> the materials to cast the spell itself are also kind of a joke. I don't think they're going to require a lot of money, at least in components. Well, you never know. Well, specifically, what I was talking about was inks. Copying to, it down. To copy yeah. it down. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is one that can be hand waved with uh, an arcing focus. Yeah, um, I haven't exactly been raking in money lately, but I'm sitting on 472 gold, so. I don't remember what third level inks. I believe it's 50 gold per level. Yeah, Gaz is not going to bother. <laughs> Veritas will chip in with the potion buying as well. Excellent. He will pull out 499 copper pieces. <laughs> oh no. 320 silver pieces. And 14 gold pieces from his pocket as it's pouring out onto the onto the counter. Oh, that he's should that be guy. enough for one potion. Well, let me double check. One, two. Oh my lord! Three. Four. Oh, wait, this what is have all, you done? This was all my money. <laughs> oh. Shows up to buy things with pennies. Uh, buddy, why don't why don't I can uh, I I can definitely chip in. Uh, also, keep forgetting that I have these in here, and I'll pull four potions of healing from my bag. Oh, uh, 
<laughs> so we maybe don't need to buy all of them, all of them. Does anyone want a vision? I didn't can, realize we had some. If this can help keep my friends alive, this is no big issue. If that's all your money, then we hold on to it. Um, definitely a, a pretty flush right now. I'll vote with that. Are you sure? Oh, yeah, don't worry about it. Um, you can remember me next time or something. I don't know. Uh, and it's for, for six healing potions, that should be 300 gold. Uh, yes. my math right? Mm. Yes. Oh. I, I will plunk down 30 platinum. Ah. I, I'm pretty good for potions, but you guys you take what you need. Well, three platinum will get you most of the way to one of one. Is it 30? Is it three zero? Yes, it's 30. Oh, 30. I thought you said three. <laughs> Sorry, old age has caused my hearing to become quite, uh, bad. Worries, yeah. We are tossing the, in the background, scooping up the, all, all the change he put on the table. <laughs> <laughs> but aren't you have... Perhaps a stop at the bank to exchange Veritas's currency. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagining Veritas just like shoveling all these copper pieces directly into his chest. <laughs> <laughs> mm, that's weird. <laughs> anyway, uh, ma magic trick. Is there, all right. is there anything else that I could perchance interest to you? I think we're okay, unless you've got anything really cool that you want to advertise. I do, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and he kind of sweeps up under the desk and pulls out a yellow gem sparkling with magical energy. This is an elemental gem containing the power to conjure an elemental from the plains of in this one in particular, of Earth. Ooh. Summoning a powerful elemental to fight by your side, simply by crushing it. Glances pointedly over at Gazrakul. Ah, just by crushing it, huh? You don't need any extra components to summon this, this powerful being? Nope. Oh, how convenient! Right, guys? What nature is this being? Hmm, an elemental of the plane of Earth. But it does what you tell it to do. More or less. How long does it last on this plane? A... a about an hour. And your price for this gem? For this gem? 900 gold. Such a steep price to pay, isn't it, Eve? Eve kind of glares a little bit. I think it's perfectly reasonable, and a less steep price than other prices might be. <clears throat> they anyway. have staying in the desert. Life is cheap. Oh, guess what? This isn't the desert. Anyway, I'd be happy to chip in if you're interested. Do you happen to have any other scrolls available of a more powerful nature, perhaps of third or fourth level, if one were to level magics on a scale? 
If one were, I might have something, anything in particular you're looking for. Um, let's see. Perhaps a dimension door or uh, I thought you had dimension door. Mm-hmm. No, I used the museum apparatus to do that. Uh, oh. He can that's eat right. to that stars. <laughs> I can have anything, but if I want things to be more consistent and less dangerous, then I would need to, like, memorize it. All right. I want things to be boring. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Dimension door. I have, I have Dimension door. Oh. Or Lightning Bolt. Yeah, let's do Lightning Bolt, if they have it. Unfortunately, do not have Lightning Bolt, but do have a Scroll of Dimension Door. How much? How much? That would be 500 gold. Ah, well... We thank you for finding it for us. It's a little too rich for our blood. That is unfortunate. Indeed, perhaps someday we will come back for it. But thank you for your time. Very well. Anything else that I can help you all of you with? Good. Gosh, anything? I'm all set. And, uh, I was serious. Like I'm holding the six potions. Like I'm kind of good right now. Uh, do you want to take a couple of these? Uh, we Eve, you want to put one in your pocket and wink. Ah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a good idea. Glances down at her hip. We'll take one too if you're offering, Bosh. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've got six, so I think uh, you each want to take two. Uh, so Tia, you have your thing where you don't really have kids, so I can. I've got all these I can hold on to. Ever need them? I also have my own magics. And they're just regular potions of healing? Yep, just regular old potions of healing. Sweet. He will take one and kind of clink the other against her rapier hilt. <laughs> There's a mental sigh and your, <laughs> and your hilt eats the potion. <laughs> Eve nods with satisfaction. Veritas will take one. Okay, thank you very much for letting us peruse your fine wares, sir. Thank you for perusing. Oh, and here's an idea for you. <clears throat> it gets a slightly mischievous look on her face. So if people tend to just come in and then run away when they come in here, right? Mm-hmm. Have you thought about maybe when they enter... You lock the door behind them for a minute, just to give them a minute to calm down. Hmm. Couldn't that also make them panic more? I don't know what you mean. (laughs) Hmm. But once they see how friendly and kind you are, I'm sure they'll calm right down. Of course. 
If they're reasonable, then they should see reason. Yeah. And downside? Only downside? You might have to repair your door. <laughs> hmm. Might be slightly annoying, but it's mostly for all of you still the flesh. You could even just make it like a selling point of the shop people know that they could get a good scare out of this. You could even have a little like viewing area where people could come in and watch the people get scared. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, that might not be your thing. Uh, so not all ghosts want to die and scare people. Not all of us know. Although I don't really meet too many ghosts. Anyway, guys, should we uh, head back out and get to work? That's probably important. Let's get moving. Eve's gonna be the last one out and kind of turn around, trot back to Aetherius and be like, how much was it for that gem again? 900, my good lady. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab that too. Very well, all yours. Go ahead and add a yellow diamond. Neat. Would that be 90 platinum? That would be 90 platinum, yes. Okay. Eve's pockets are now significantly lighter. <laughs> Thanks so much. She'll run out after everyone else. Enjoy. All right. I presume you head back to the dark ward? Yep, might as well. I need to meet uh, Eve's pirate, I mean, sailor friend. Let's get us a ride. Yeah, you want to go on a bit of a cruise, huh? The don't say Yar, Kaimal. Really, man? What? It's fun. <laughs> You're gonna give my friends the wrong impression. They've already got enough weird impressions of me. And what's wrong with a good Yar? Oh, Yar. Anyway. Oh. Oh, no. We don't use the P word here. Yeah, because it's not true. You got that, guys? It's not true, all right? For the last time. Not true? Looks over at Eve's friend. Not true. Anyway, Kaibo, yeah, we'd like to uh, uh, take a little uh, tour, sort of, of the bay. Uh, don't be alarmed. We do want to do some, some diving. Hmm, you got a bit of a big group. Mm -hmm. might, might be a bit cramped. Roll a mm. persuasion check. Come on, Kaibal. How long have we known each other now? <laughs> For old time's sake, huh? You're right. Tell you what. I'm a little 
busy at the moment, sitting at a bar. But as long as you promise that when you come back you'll tell me at least some of the stories that you've gotten whilst you've been out there, mm -hmm. I'll say that it'll be a lot less crowded if it's just your friends, you and your friends. Oh, that would be wonderful and I would love nothing more than to share some prime stories with you. I've got quite a few. Aye, that's what I like to hear. Just remember... Don't break it. <laughs> we will take the utmost care of your vessel. We know that's your livelihood. I, I trust you, Eve. It's a friend I don't know about. <laughs> Things in and whispers. They're good people. Uh, for the most part. <clears throat> right. Yeah. All right, you guys ready? Right, just go ask Skinny Joe for for some orders. We'll do. We'll pay him a visit. See you soon, Kaimo. All right, better. Hmm. Make sure to take good care of your boat. See to it. This boat is doomed, right? <laughs> yeah. Once we get outside, Gazar Cool says he's going to be very upset when we come out back without his boat. But we're not gonna come back without his boat. That'll be terrible. Eve, it's us. We can't go a single day without property damage. If we didn't, buildings would start to spontaneously combust around us. <sighs> Let's just give it our best. Point. Gonna do our best. Gonna do our best to keep this boat in one piece. All right. That means no setting things on fire. Points at Gosford Pool. No eating anything on board. Points at Veritas. And no, uh, you guys are pretty responsible, pointing at Bosch and Tia. Put away. Hardly ever break stuff. <laughs> All right. Kazra yeah. cool leans over to Veritas. I'm willing to bet you all your copper that this boat will end up at the bottom of the ocean. Deal. <laughs> also, begins he's... silently planning to sink the boat for copper. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't have taken their bet. <laughs> uh, Eve will also. What's... Go ahead. Oh, he is betting for five hundred, no, four hundred and ninety-nine copper, which is the equivalent of almost five gold pieces. <laughs> Kazrakul cool is like, yeah, worth it. Worth some uh, property damage. Sign me up. <laughs> Uh, Eve will also, on the way over, uh, hand over to Gazra Cool the gem that she purchased. She thinks about tossing it to them for a moment and then realizes what a terrible idea that would be. <laughs> so she just, like, pokes them in the back with it and is like, Here, this is for you, so you don't have to worry about getting anything else for a while, right? We can't help but be touched at your moral idealism, Eve. We will indeed use this if necessary. But you realize this is a one-time thing. Once this gem breaks, 
it's God. Yeah, well, that's one more life that gets to exist for a lot longer in the world. I'd say that's worth it. As you say, thank you. We know this was no cheap bobble. Ah, yeah, sure, it's fine. I mean, you guys did save my life before, after all. We're sure you'll get the chance to repay the favor. <laughs> I'll do my best. Hey, any of you guys ever manned a ship before? No. Is this like a ship or is this like a a, a fishing dinghy? <laughs> between it is a is what you would know as a keel boat mm-hmm. yeah ever been on one of these before no uh, not so much it looks something like a, a sand sailor of the desert tribes but we're not sure if it works similarly That sounds really neat. Can't say if it's similar, because I've got no idea what that looks like. But, uh, I, I know a little bit about ships. Should be, should be fine. He suddenly looks a lot less certain of this course of action. When she says she knows a little bit about it, you get the idea that she's never really, uh, been at the helm of one or anything similar. Maybe we should do the whole um, spell thing so we can breathe water before we get on the boat. Yeah, that might be for the best. Okay, but uh, it's, uh, you know, you've seem to have the most experience, I think Eva should be captain, right? Uh, Yar. Oh. Oh, oh my god. Captain Eve! Oh no, what have we done? What have I done? Why? Why? Okay. Not this again. <sighs> We're just all so confident in you. Ah, that's... That's nice, you guys. Really. Hey, Chella, do you want to be captain? No. (laughs) (sighs) That's what we forgot. Should have seen in the shop if they had a captain's hat. All right, everyone, let's go ahead and set sail real quick, like right now. Eve, I would like you to roll a dexterity saving throw. Oh, God. Your anti-captaining skills are on point, as on the wind, you all see a captain's hat floating through it and nearly land atop Eve's head, but (laughs) Eve narrowly dodges to the side, and the hat lands in the water. (laughs) Eve does a double take and then gives the floating captain's hat in the water a double middle finger. (laughs) No! Yells up at this guy, Stop trying to make it happen! It's not gonna happen! Sorry, okay. (laughs) You're causing a scene. Anyway, let's 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 go. Let's do the thing. Um, uh, Bo- Bosh, pull on those ropes. Make sure the sails are taut. Um, uh, okay. Uh, keep a lookout out front. Make sure there aren't any rocks that we're gonna hit. 
Gods are cool. Don't set anything on fire. Tia, watch them and make sure they don't set anything on fire, please. Okay. Oh, shite, ores. Wait, do we need to use those? Oh, yeah, he did say to get some ores. Ask for some ores. Did we already do that? Ask for some ores? We gotta go ask uh, Slim. Skinny Joe! Skinny Joe. We skipped, we skipped the step. Hi. Hi. I'm Skinny Joe. No. I'm, I've been <laughs> standing here the whole time. <laughs> oh! So sorry about that. Didn't didn't see you there. It's okay. No, you turn I sideways. You're. I was standing behind this pole. <laughs> no. Yeah, I was gonna say when you turn sideways, you're almost invisible. Yeah, it's because I'm real skinny. Mm. Anyway, got some ores for us. Yep. They're right there. Just points to them. They're on the ground. Oh. Good. Cool. Thanks. Do any of you even know how to sail? Nope. 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 Oh. Uh, eh? You didn't sound confident, Miss Eve. <laughs> All right. Oh, hey, you remember me. Uh, hi. Hi. <laughs> Oh yeah, Skinny Joe doesn't remember it. Remembers everything. Huh? Huh? You want to run us through a real quick crash course? Sure, I suppose. Well, you got a mast. It's got sails. Unfurl the sails to go. Doesn't go real fast if you're going into the wind, but with the wind it goes pretty dang fast. Or you could just use the oars. Ah, see, 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 see. So the sails will work without the oars, right? If it's in the right direction. Mm-hmm. Okay, awesome. Anything else we should know? There is a, uh, a rudder of sorts in the back. Just kind of hold on to that. You're going to want to push it to the port when you want to go starboard and pull it to the starboard when you want to go port. You following me? I think so. Yeah, I know what that means. Which way is Okay, I think you got it. <laughs> so I think that means Captain Eve gets to be on the rudder. Oh, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Now, a keel boat isn't a big enough ship to have an anchor, so you will have to make sure that, uh, that you might have to leave someone if you are going diving or something. I don't know. Seems like that might be a thing you might want to do. Just a sense old Skinny Joe gets. Squint, Skinny Joe. Skinny Joe is always squinting. <laughs> Fair enough. Is this really the person known as Skinny Joe? Or are we being bamboozled right now? Roll an insight check. It's still happening doing a sailor accent. <laughs> nope. With your insight, you're just like, no, this is how Skinny Joe is. <laughs> He's just like this. <laughs> <laughs> ah, wise as always, Skinny Joe. I'm always wise, because I'm Skinny Joe. <laughs> Veritas understands. Veritas. Oh, I've always... Yeah, Veritas gets it. Mm -hmm. I've always way. wondered, where did you come from and where did you... Anyway, we should set That's off. <laughs> Nobody knows where I go. 
Okay. <clears throat> All right. So you all climb into the keelboat. And ah. I soon head off. So Heading off. Yes. One of you does need to pilot the ship. I guess that's me. So you're not proficient. Nope. I would like an intelligence check. Ooh. Come on, I've been rolling great all night. Let's keep this up. Okay. Fifteen. You are able to um, steer and give instructions enough where you are able to navigate within the bay. Now, I need Colin, I need you to roll for Tia on guiding you a survival check from Tia. Ha. Survival check for Tia. And I will say for this that they are proficient. They add a plus three. Okay. If they are not okay, proficient so. in survival. I don't know if they are or not. Uh, she is not proficient in survival. In any case, so... for this check, she would be considered proficient. Oh, okay. Then let's add. Uh, a, a ten. Seven. Oh, you already had... No, it would yes. be, because it would be plus their wisdom. Do, don't they have a positive wisdom? Nope. Oh. He has wisdom is 11. Oh, I thought it was more than that. Well. Nope. He's distracted because as soon as we hit open water, Gazra Cool made eye contact and was like, she didn't say anything about acid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, so she's constantly having to look over her shoulder to make sure mm-hmm. that, that Gazra Cool doesn't melt the boat down. And unfortunately, you are out on the bay for many hours. The It's, luckily, it is not a hot or muggy day. It is a it in it is a late autumn day, actually. So it's actually kinda crisp and every once in a while a breeze will uh go across the channel and really bring you down to to your really bring a chill down to your bones. But eventually as the sun begins to set, Tia uh, kind of perks up a bit. Down there. It's below us. Oh, shite. Uh, Bosh! Bosh, drop the sails! Pull them down! I pull it. Bosh checks himself as he's about to just tear the the sails. Okay. I think I see a rock! I will say this. I will say this. Eve, you succeeded on your intelligence check, so you hear in your mind, Skinny Joe's voice, you mean raise the sails. No, I want us to stop moving. Exactly. Because we're there. You want to raise them. They fold up at the top. Oh, shite. Yeah, that, that's what I meant. <laughs> um, you gotta tell Bosch he's gonna rip the sail off. <laughs> S- yeah. Squid! No, wait! <laughs> Squid. Pull him all the way up to the top, like squish him up at the top. That's where they furl up, I guess. I'll, I'll do my best, dude. You said squish him up at the top. No, uh, you can tie him up, I think. I think that's how it works. Okay. There, there is, in fact, rigging that does go up to the, the top of the mast. 
I don't know how sales work, but apparently Bosch is going to go up to the top. <laughs> to do this, <laughs> he was going to try to steer us in in circles in the meantime. Make sure we don't lose the spot. As you circle around and raise the sails, you... The current, luckily, has seemed to have died at... died down at this point, and the water is quite still for an ocean bay. Looking down, you can see that the water in the sun... in the fading light has grown increasingly dark. But Tia is confident that the cave is down there. So, is... Obviously I have to go down there to guide everyone to the cave. Are we leaving anyone on the ship, or...? Oh yeah, Skinny Joe said we had to leave somebody. Yeah, we're gonna have to. Um... I definitely want to be there to heal you guys if anything goes sideways. Uh, we can take care of the ship. Um, hey, Chelly. Yes. Would you mind terribly watching the ship and making sure that maybe there's a light lit so that we can see it? come back to yeah roll a persuasion check come on Chelevi you're not gonna make me trust Kazraku with this are you <laughs> I'd say you'd have advantage yeah. on this at this point but 23 is enough all right, just, you know, if it looks bad, don't try fighting underwater. Yeah, we'll do our best to avoid that if we can. But feel free to check in every now and then, and we'll give you updates. Okay? Okay. Is it wise to leave her here unattended? I think it's the wisest choice I could possibly make. Looking directly at them. She's got this. Right, Chelavi? Just more worried about all of you. Sister, uh, if anything does happen, I'll be sure to contact you. Good. Okay. Let's. Oh, this. Ooh, I just realized. This time of year, it's gonna be really cold in there. Shite. <sighs> okay, everybody, enjoy the last bit of warmth we're gonna be feeling for a while. And let's get ready to jump in. Gazrakul pulls out the scroll and casts Water Breathing. Alright. You all gain the ability to breathe in liquids. One, two, three. Veritas jumps in. And mid jumping in, you see him transform into a whip. Oh! Sploop. <laughs> um, is that. Did you go get him? Yep, let's go! Leaps out. 
Splash. A banana as well. Splash. Well, bigger splash. Gazra cool carefully steps over the side of the ship and lowers themselves into the water. <laughs> it is cold. Because you are in late autumn, starting to head into winter, and it is, this water is cold. If any of you had any inclinations of falling asleep soon, not anymore. You are all wide awake. But you all look down and peer into utter darkness. This is fine. Even those of you with dark vision look down and just like, that's dark. Um, question about spell casting? Mm -hmm. Can we do verbal components underwater? Um, with water breathing, yes. Okay. Then as... Oh no, my instruments! Oh. Oh, fuck! And ah. Why would you get them ruined? You... Eve. That is correct. You may have items that you do not wish to get wet and may wish to leave in the boat. Oh god, surely we would have thought of this beforehand, right? Of course. Okay, yeah, Eve's gonna leave behind her vial and lyre and, well, I mean, if things were in the bag of holding, then they should be fine, right? Because it's airtight, right? Weirdly, yes. Bizarre. All right. All that stuff's going in the bag. Eve's instrument of choice that she's going to use is the penny whistle that she bought ages ago. Underwater, you guys hear this gurgly little doop doop. And a few orbs of shimmery light appear around us as she casts dancing lights and her little cast iron lanterns pop up. You all good there, Eve? You hear clearly in your head. Oh, it's cold. It's cold. It's cold. It's dark. It's maybe a little less dark now. In that but darkness, you see a slithering snake coming towards you. Oh, shy! Ah! It, it's me. What? You see closely that it actually is a whip that is slithering like a snake. Or an eel. Oh, oh! He almost gave me a heart attack. Well, that's that's good thinking, though. Good form for moving around in here. Do the do the dancing lights help at all? They help a little bit. What they do is help illuminate why it's so dark. Is because water. This water is not crystal clear. It is seawater. And as such, no matter how much light you put into it, or how much dark vision you have, your vision is limited to 30 feet. Ah, it's murky in these waters. Stay close, everyone. Kind of just like pinging in all of your heads. Don't want to be snatched away in the darkness. So I'm guessing we're going down, but uh, which way are you feeling, Tia? Uh, in your mind, Bosch, you hear her say, further down, it's not too far away, but it may get a bit uncomfortable. And Tia will lead the way down into the murky depths. And as you all dive into these waters, unsure of what you'll find, 
that is what, where we will leave off for tonight.